Just a second. Okay. Alrighty, we're going to talk about animation, just like last year, but now about Angular 2 and ng-animate. So my name is Matthias. I work at Google in California with the Angular team, and I've been working on the framework for about three years now. That is a link to the slides. So before I switch the slides, be sure to copy that down. That will be available at the end of the talk. All right, so let's talk about animation. This is the big thing that I'm passionate about, and I love working on this feature for Angular 2. So if we think about websites, we think about four things when it comes to animating. These are the four things that we'll hop to right away. And this is really nice and cool that we have these features in a browser. But there's certain trade-offs with each one. So with transitions, it's nice because you can hop between classes and hover states, stuff like that. It's, very, it's automatic, the styles are picked up, but anything programmatic and controllable is very difficult. Keyframes, on the other hand, are tricky because you do have more programmatic access, but you have to know all the styles up front. And this, in turn, is a little bit more performant than transitions. And that leads us to web animations, which is the JavaScript version of keyframes. But what's tricky about this is we don't have access to the style sheet. So there really isn't one thing that sort of fits everything. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because these three different things are combined in Angular 2. But before we hop over to that, let's talk about ng1. So Angular 1's approach to doing animations was to rely heavily on the browser. You add a CSS class, you wait for an event to happen, the animation's done. The framework really didn't know what was going on with the animations. And <clears throat> with that in mind, everything falls down to the DOM state. If we were to have a different platform, say, native rendering, we wouldn't be able to do this in Angular 1. So with that in mind, Angular 2 does it differently, and we have to do it differently to support all this criteria. And the biggest change is that we don't use transitions or keyframes at all. Now, don't let that scare you. We still borrow the philosophy that keyframes and transitions bring to the table but we do it with web animations. And this whole ecosystem gives us a timeline-based animation system, and everything is triggered from component states. So before I start showing demos and start hopping into things, if you go on my GitHub page and you look at the first link in the repository, so you should see ng-conf demos. There's instructions on how to run those. One key thing is that we have the API that we're putting into Angular 2, and there's an older version of it that we're experimenting with that has demos for st uh, staggering and querying. But all that will be available in the final product, but the demos are in there, and I'll go over them in the slides. So animation in Angular 2, let's go over the basics. This is what it looks like. You have some HTML elements. And instead of attaching a property or a class or an event, you are attaching an animation UI state. And what this means is when the expression changes its value, we can animate the arc in between. So effectively, we're setting states in our code, and animations can be activated in between. So we've, na we've named our animation my animation, and inside of our component, we reference that my, my animation code, and we specify the transition between states. So in this example, we are animating from an opacity of 0 to an opacity of 1. But you might be looking at this, and you might, might be wondering, this is actually a fair bit of code. It's more complicated than CSS. So bear with me. You'll see the power soon. Here, for example, we have an application that has this stuff working where we specify the My Animation code, and we've made it so when we click, it's going to toggle from open to close. So we have the My Animation code above, and when that changes, we're either going to be at the open or close state, but we're going to animate the arc in between. So both of these animations are going to happen for half a second in between, and it's going to go from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So you can already see that each animation ends in a UI state, but we have total control of the animation from one state to the other. And the component itself is still the same. So this brings us to component UI states. Like I said before, we're using the at sign to declare those. And what's nice about this is the styling is persisted. Unlike classes like ng-enter and ng-leave in Angular 1, 
the classes were removed and the styling was removed from there as well. Here the styling stays if you specify an end state. So that brings us to our first demo. Let's take a look at this. Here we have an inbox for Angular 2. We have some very important content in this inbox. And as we jump between email messages, we can see animations happening. And we're animating different parts of the page, and things are moving smoothly. And this, once again, this is in the demo repo code. So, sorry, looking at this, this is what the code looks like in that HTML template. We have a left-hand column and a right-hand column, and we're using the state value in the middle of the code to change the state whether an email becomes active or hidden, and we do that again further down on the right-hand column. And then our component then taps into the state changes from being active to hidden. And there's also something called a void state, which is very useful when an element has been ripped out of the page. So if you think about NGF, when it has been removed out of the page, it's considered void. So we've animated the transition from one state to the other. And if you notice on the second transition, we're actually adding additional styling, and then we're doing the destination state animation. So. This brings to mind performance. Why did we do this new refactoring? Why do we have such a different system that deviates so far away from CSS? Well, the biggest reason is we don't want to have to rely on the DOM. We don't want to have to rely on get-computed style because get-computed style is tricky and it causes browser jank. And we really want to use web animations. Finally, having the ability to code gen this, which basically means taking our complicated animation code and making simple render statements, also yields a lot of performance, and this all works with web workers. So continuing forward then, the only dependency you do need is the web animations polyfill. Now, there is a W3C polyfill, which does work and has been used, and us on the, we on the Angular team are putting together a lightweight polyfill, which you can use directly with Angular as well, which is smaller and only has the code that we need for Angular to work with web animations. So let's talk about the styling capabilities of this new API. How can we apply style? You might be wondering, what happened to classes? What happened to keyframes? How do we use those? Well, the good news is that we have a CSS parser built in to the framework. That means that we can define stuff in a style sheet, whether it be CSS classes or keyframes. So if you're familiar with the Animate CSS library, that is a bunch of keyframes, right? So we reference them in our component. That's how we would define an inline style. And that's how we can actually use the CSS class directly in our code. Now, this is really nice because you can have a completely external style sheet that has nothing to do with your Angular app, but you can tap into the CSS classes fully. You can also use the keyframes for animate CSS. And we can also generate a keyframe directly within the API. So this will generate a keyframe with four steps that occur for one second. We can also have a really cool feature called auto styling. So the dreaded height auto thing has been resolved with Angular 2. Let's take a look at a demo that does this. So here I have a few entries, a few Star Wars entries that copied some text from Wikipedia. And this is an accordion animation that animates items out and in. If I click on one, it animates one. I click on another, it animates another. Now, the animation itself isn't anything stellar. But if I were to tell you that this is only about five lines of code, just for the animation piece, and it's fully able to detect the height, so if I change it, it's able to detect what the final height value is automatically. And the way that it does that is with automatic styling. So if you pass the CSS property with a star, it will automatically pick up that value from get computed style. You don't need to know the destination style. So anything that expands, contracts, is far easier to do with ng-animate and Angular 2. So. <laughs> OK, continuing forward. So you might be wondering, what happened to all the JavaScript code? This is still CSS-based. Yes, we have JavaScript for the sequencing and stuff like that. Well, the thing I'm going to encourage you with is that the JavaScript code isn't entirely necessary with this API. Because if you want to have dynamic properties, so here, for example, we want to have a modal that shows up on the page, but we want it to be bound to the x and y coordinates, you can register a transformation function that will figure out that dynamic styling and pass it directly into the animation. Also. You can have 
and this isn't working just yet, but we have plans to do this, we'll be able to have component access so we can directly pull data from the component, pass it into the style, into the uh, animation sequencing. So what about cool stuff like querying and running animations in parallel and performing easing? Well, let's take a look at our third demo. Here we have a modal that's going to appear on page when we click on the contact us. And that has a bunch of elements within the modal animating and then animations happening in parallel when we exit. Now, what does this code look like? Here we have usage of query where we're selecting elements within the modal. We're applying styles. And then we are animating styles in parallel. If you notice the group at the top, we're animating the container and the inner items. So what's next then? Staggering. Now this was a feature that wasn't Angular 1, but it was limited to what CSS can do as staggering, which was hacked together with ng-animate. But with this one, we have full support. We can either use a collection of existing staggering capabilities. We can even create our own staggering capabilities. So let's see. Here, for example, I'm selecting all the ng4s that updated on a page. I'm going to set them all to be hidden, and then I'm going to stagger over them and animate them in piece by piece to opacity. That should actually be opacity of one. So here, for example, I've created my own custom stagger method that somehow figures out a duration of delay based on some environment settings in the DOM. So if you think about a window or a route, you click on a route and you go to the right-hand page and you click and it goes to the left-hand page, you could have a stagger that could correspond to what direction you're going in. So this brings us to our fourth demo. Here we have a bunch of boxes that are all staggered with a special animation. And this is available in the, DOM, in the GitHub code. So component access. This is a very powerful feature. What, what, what would you say if I were to create an animation, but I want to tap into when the done event happens in my component? Or I want to be able to control it frame by frame? Well. You can inject, well, not inject, but you can pass in an annotation into your class and have access directly to the animation. So before, when we define the my animation code in our, in our annotation code, we can ask for it directly in our component. And we can tap into the done events and stuff like that. And we can also control the animation frame by frame, even if the animation is a gigantic sequence that touches multiple elements. So here we have a demo of that. So let's refresh. So I click bottom, this box is moving around, but in my component, I'm accessing it directly, frame by frame. And this is what Web Animations allows us to do. And you do not have to do anything else besides asking for the animation, getting the active player, and setting its position percentage. And if you notice, as I continue, it continues where it is, and then our done callback happens, and we are ready. All right. So, oh. So that was the animation that was happening there. We had a keyframe animation spread across multiple steps. And the web animations player was able to consume that and allow us to animate it piece by piece. So let's talk about custom renders. Now, custom rendering is a special feature in Angular 2 where we can swap out the render code with a different API. And in order to do this, we added an animate method directly into a render, which looks like this that contains the elements and a bunch of other properties. And all you have to do in your code is implement this and have it animated. So all that stuff with animate this step, animate this step, all that choreography code is handled by Angular. All the CSS code is parsed by Angular. And it's all delivered to the platform. So with the, the folks from NativeScript were nice enough to put a demo of this together, where what they were doing was they're using the animation code. Now note that this is the older version of the ng-animate code that was in a branch that I had. And they're running an iOS and Android instance of this using these animations directly and running it on a native level. But this is nice because you don't have to do animations in the way that iOS or Android do them. You just do them in the way that you're used to using CSS. So you might be wondering, when is this coming out? Well, we, we were trying really very hard to have this ready for RC0. 
And it is very close to having the foundation in, which involves the dynamic styling, the CSS parser, and the ability to sequence animations together. So please wait a few weeks, and we'll have this in here. The API is final. We know that this is definitely going in. And uh, it's going to be exciting once it's done. Thank you to each of these talented programmers. You guys helped me a lot with this presentation. Thanks a bunch to Robert. He helped do the demos. And uh, Thomas and the three of us have been planning this API for a long time. And a special thanks to Alexander from NativeScript who helped put the video together and Burke for hooking that up. And also for Taro for uh, including ng-animate into your talks. And uh, the guy in the middle, Martin, is, ha has been helping me put together the web animations polyfill. So this is a collective effort and you guys did a wonderful job. Thank you.